listen, I am not, not, not talking about Dusty's, F-Boys, Red Pills, any of those type of men. This is about how to attract a real masculine man of God, one who wants to provide for you, protect you, wants to love you the way Jesus Christ loved the church, okay? Those are the men I am talking about, so. Hey girl, hey, welcome back to all my homegirls. And welcome if you are new here, I'm Sky Anjanae. I make content all about how to nurture your femininity, being a woman of God, and beauty. If you have not watched this video, stop right here, watch that video, because I talk about how to avoid toxic men in the ways that, in ourselves, that we need to work on so that we don't even attract those type of men in the first place. So, watch that video first, then come back to this one. But, if you've already watched that video, let's get into it. So, in the previous video, like we all know, I mentioned to know what you want in a man, but I want to break that down a little further in this video. So, if you know that you want a man with money, that means you need to be put yourself in places where a man with money would be. So, that's not at the clubs, that's not at the bars, it's, it's in places like nice, elegant restaurants, go to a hotel, like... Be in places where the man that you want will frequent, okay? <laughs> you know, you want a man of God, which I'm sure we that's all what we want because we are women of God. Go to church. Get involved with your church. Get involved in volunteering. Go places where you typically will find the type of man that you want, essentially. By putting yourself in these places, you're allowing them to find you. Okay, it's like you wouldn't go to a Toyota dealership looking to buy a Porsche. It's, it's not going to be there. Okay, <laughs> so put yourself in places where that man that you, the type of man that you want, will typically be. Sitting at home thinking a man is going to drop into your lap, that's not, it's not realistic. <laughs> Next, which is really the main thing, is to lead with your femininity. What do I mean by that? First of all, you already need to be walking in your feminine energy anyway. And if you don't know how to do that, that means you need to watch other videos on my channel because that's literally one of the main things I talk about is being a feminine woman. So already walk, walking in that is the start. Before you do anything or before you even try to attract a masculine man, you need to be a feminine woman because they balance each other out. Okay? They are meant to coexist together one does not dictate the other now that men masculine men can help you stay in your femininity when it comes to being in a relationship but outside of a relationship you already need to be a feminine woman and there are verbal and non-verbal ways that to, you can lead with your femininity so when i say non-verbally leading with your femininity i mean letting your femininity speak for yourself as you just walk into a room like I always say, femininity is an essence, it's a state of being. So the way you appear, like how you put effort into your looks, how you dress, the way you carry yourself, the way you just show up to a place with confidence, those are all nonverbal ways to lead with your femininity. He's, you're going to catch his eye off bat just by walking in the room. If you're looking good, you're confident, you smell good, and you just have a grace about you. So it's the way you walk in. Do you walk in with your head down or you look like you're uncomfortable? That's not leading with your femininity. That's leading with your insecurities. Walk in with your head held. I held head. Girl works <laughs> walk in with your head held high wear something beautiful always look beautiful especially when you're going into public settings and social settings make sure you put effort into yourself because a man loves a beautiful confident woman so your feminine energy is just going to radiate when you walk into the room with confidence and you're looking good before you even open your mouth he's already interested because of how you came into the room and led with that feminine energy and so now let's get into for how to verbally lead with your femininity now this may be controversial but i think the way i'm going to break it down it'll make more sense so being a feminine woman your femininity and your womanhood is what you offer to a man just like his masculinity and his manhood is what he offers to you as the woman 
So we want a man to provide and protect us and make us feel safe and all of these things. And he shows that through his money, the way he treats you in public, the way he shows affection to you. So is he pulling your chair out when you're sitting down? Is he opening the door for you? Is he telling you how you look, how beautiful you look? Those are the things that we expect from a man. Like, is he paying for the date, for the first date? Is he doing these things that we all expect from him? Now, verbally, as women, especially independent women, Independent women get a really bad rep, but it's because they are forced into their masculinity. Masculine, masculinity is boastful, okay? So as a feminine woman, you aren't, you should lead with your femininity by talking to him about the things that make you a woman. Like, don't go in to talking about, at least not initially, I'm not now if the conversation comes up, absolutely, but don't go in talking all about your accomplishments. Oh, you have a house, you have these cars, you have, you make this amount of money, you have this many degrees. All of those things are beautiful and congratulations for attaining all of these things. But that does not make you a good suit for him because you have all of these things. Those things are not you. They are great accomplishments. You should absolutely be proud. And it's not to say that he won't appreciate that you have those things. Those things just don't. That, that's in the grand scheme of things, as his job and his role in the relationship, your degrees, your money, your cars, your house, that does not, that it, it, it won't mean anything to him because he has that as well. And he wants to give that to you. Like a masculine man can, will know that you have it. But men like to be needed. They want to feel needed because that's their role and job in the relationship is to take care of you. And if you're showing him up front all the ways that you don't need him, why would he want to be bothered with you? You know, it kind of now he's looking like, OK, well, it defeats the purpose. Like, And I think because women, we are so um, well off, we are very educated we think that that makes us who we are and that it's not what is inside of you who are you to the core that makes you the woman that you are and a woman that will benefit him because at the end of the day relationship is give and take it's, you have to give him something for him to see that you are even the woman that he should even be bothered with he's vetting you just as much as you're vetting him so to break it out even further so that it, it really makes sense when you think of it in a more simplistic way i came up with this analogy so think about say you're going to buy a house you have the realtor you have this home and then there's you so in this scenario the house represents all of your feminine qualities all of things that make you a woman the realtor is how you lead, like whether you leave your femininity or your masculinity and you buying the house is the man. So that's what that's what these things represent in this scenario. So you're going to buy this house and you have a realtor and they're telling you all the great things about the house. This house is in a great neighborhood. It is safe for your, so it'll be safe for your kids to play. The education system is great. There's schools, a high school, elementary school, walking distance, and all of these great things. The house was built with this certain type of brick that is uh, indestructible, whatever the case may be. They're telling you all the great things that make the house the house, okay? But then on the flip side, let's say this side, a, a realtor is like, well, I've been a realtor for this amount of years and I make this amount of money selling houses and I sell million dollar houses and I'm just so good and I've gotten an award for being one of the best realtors in the district and blah, 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 blah. And this is all they're telling you while they're, what they're showing you the house. Which house, I mean, which realtor are you going to go with? The one who told you all the great qualities of the house? Or the one that's just talking about all of their accomplishments. Me personally, I'm going with the one who told me about the house because that's what makes this. You gave me all the reasons why this house is livable and why this house would be perfect for me. All I know is all the great things you've done in your life, which congratulations, but that don't help me buy the house. That don't help me choose if this house is good for me. 
That's exactly what a man would feel like if you're just telling him all your accomplishments. Again, your accomplishments are great. There are some just to absolutely be proud of. Just don't lead with them. I'm not saying you cannot talk about them down the line or eventually, but that should not be one of the first things that come out of your mouth because he, what can he do with that information <laughs> besides congratulate you? So if you're not talking about your accomplishments, what are you? What do I talk about? You ask. I got the answer for you. And I'm just going to tell you what not to do. I'm going to tell you how to do it. So you want to, I'm going to use myself as an example and how I would lead with my femininity. So you're getting to know someone and he just talk, he just wants to know about yourself. He wants you to tell him about yourself. Something that I would say, and, and honestly, be honest with yourself about these things too when you're talking and getting to know someone. Don't say you're great at communicating and then y'all get in a relationship and the first sign of a conflict, you shut down or you, you're hysterically crying or you cuss him out, whatever they can be. Be honest about the type of woman you are. So talk about your, like I said, talk about your feminine aspects. Me personally, mine would be one that I am a woman of God, which means I'm going to pray for you. And because I am a woman of God, I have that peace in me that surpasses all understanding. So when you have a long day at work, I'm there to relieve you of that stress and give you a peace. I can make a house a home. Also, I am very much family oriented, which means I will be a great mother and a wife because I'm going to put my family first. I'm going to take care of my family. Obviously, not above God, but I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to make sure the family is good. And my emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence is through the roof. It is above average, which, which means when there is conflict, I am able to assess both of our emotions. And because I know how to handle my own emotions, it won't be a toxic environment. It won't be a toxic disagreement. I'll be able to calm the situation, calm myself and really move forward and because I'm such I'm good at communicating I won't diminish you as a man when something is wrong I can tell you my feelings without making you feel like the worst man on earth okay <laughs> things like that so and it doesn't have to be that well crafted like I just did obviously but talking about your feminine qualities is, is that that's pretty much it simply talking about the qualities that make you feminine, the qualities that you have been working on so hard because you've been watching my videos and you've been implementing the tips and strategies that I've given you. And I need you to realize that this is something I had to learn as well. It's not something I found out or I did overnight. I've been on this feminine journey for three going on four years now. Girl, I, <laughs> these are all trial and error for me and I finally like got it which is why i'm sharing these things with you but like i said you have to already be operating in your feminine energy for you to even be able to lead with your femininity because you don't even know what qualities about you that make you the most feminine okay <laughs> so work on your femininity work on these tips and you will be on your way to getting your husband Okay, <laughs> but I thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to this end. Give me some thumbs up. Thank you again. I will see you in my next video.